Hello, welcome back. Today I am going to show you how and when to pot on your patio fruit trees so you can continue to get amazing crops year after year. Now, on the face of this, this is a pretty simple task. All you need to do is put it into a bigger pot. But when doing this, there are a number of factors that you need to take into consideration to ensure that you're going to be getting those amazing crops year after year. If you have a fruit tree, either in its original pot or it's been in the same pot for a good couple of years, then this is the video for you. Now behind me, we've got this really beautiful apple tree. It actually belongs to my son. When he started school about five years ago, he was given the option to choose a bare-rooted fruit tree that he could grow for himself. So he chose this apple tree behind us. And the first year, we just um, put it in a pot that we had lying around with a little bit of soil and let it do its thing. And then a couple of years later, when we moved here, I put it into this slightly larger pot. And this is where it's remained for about three years. During the summer, it's been given water when I've been watering all of my other plants on the patio. But apart from that, it's been pretty much neglected. This year, we were really lucky and the tree gave us three apples and I was thinking now we're coming into autumn this is the very beginning of the um, tree planting season so this is a really good time for us to start thinking about potting it on the next thing we need to think about is the pot that we're going to be planting it into. I've chosen this big plastic one here. It's bigger than the current one, but because it's plastic, it also means that once it's full of soil and compost and the new tree, it's not going to be too heavy for me to be able to move around the patio. You can get some really beautiful terracotta ones, um, but unfortunately that's a little bit out of my budget at the moment. And they are just far too heavy when they're full. One thing you might want to take into consideration, if you're thinking of potting it on again, try and get one with quite an easy lip on it like this. So when you pot it on again, you can easily pull it out. Some of the terracotta ones kind of have a lip that goes over and that's gonna be a complete nightmare if you want to repot it. Also with this one here, it's quite, um, it's kind of quite deep going down. Some of the pots you can get go in quite small at the bottom, which means when it's full, it's going to be top heavy. First gust of wind or a big storm, it's going to be knocking over all the time. And that's just going to damage your tree. Or again, you know, it can break it. So you don't want to do that either. But I'm really happy with this one that I'm going to be using today. The next thing that we need to think about is the medium that we'll be growing our fruit tree in. So it's really best to use a soil based compost for this because it's much heavier. And if you use something like a compost like this, it will dry out really quickly in the summer, but it won't also hold very much nutrients. So you're going to have to make sure that you keep topping it up. Now, you can actually buy in tree planting compost um, that's specially designed to give your tree a really good head start and establish well, but I don't have that. So today I'm going to be making up my tree planting compost myself. So that is a um, mix of topsoil. So this is just garden compost or dirt. And then I have some peat free compost here. And then I have a pile of worm castings. The worm castings are packed absolutely full of nutrition for my tree but it also is really good at holding water as well so a mix of all three of these will give my tree such an amazing head start and apart from the peat free compost here this has cost me absolutely nothing so I'm going to mix this all together and that should give my tree so much nutrition also, you just want to make sure as well, you add a, a bit of drainage to the very bottom of your pot. This will also add some um, weight to the bottom as well. So this is just some normal um, gravel or stones. You can pick this up um, quite cheaply from garden centres or you can just find stones as and when you're digging up the ground because we have quite a lot of that here. Before I get too excited and start mixing up all of that compost together, I'm just adding some really big pebbles at the very bottom of the pot. I have them around um, the tree here to kind of help mulch it a bit and stop the weeds coming up and keep the moisture in. And um, this is such a good thing to do at the very bottom of your pot so it has a chance to drain and doesn't get too waterlogged.
So the pot is ready now and we're getting on to the exciting bit. I'm going to mix all this compost together. I probably should be wearing gloves, but I don't actually own a pair at the moment. <laughs> this is all mixed together nicely now. So I'm going to put a small layer of um, compost over the bottom and then we can put the tree inside it and work out if we add some more soil or leave it at that level. Now we're getting on to probably the hardest part of the process. The new pot is ready and waiting for the apple tree and we have to remove the apple tree gently from its current pot and move it over to its new home. Hopefully we're not going to be breaking the current pot because it would be nice if I could reuse that. Don't have any advice this stage but let's just hope it's quite easy to remove. That was certainly a lot harder than I thought it was going to be and it's probably a two-man job but the tree is out of its wooden um, plant pot now and ready to go into the new one. There's a couple of weeds around um, the very top of the um, soil at the moment so I'm going to pull those out and then we will transfer it over. Now we're ready to move it over to the new pot. Hopefully it's at the right level and I don't need to add any more soil. So here we go pretty happy actually with the level of this because when it's filled up with soil it's going to bring me to kind of the top here which will actually allow me to put a really um, big mulch on uh, later in the year or at the beginning of spring to also give it a really good head start but then it will mean that maybe if I don't put this on for like two or three or four years maybe I can keep adding a top dressing every year and it won't go to the top of the pot one thing you need to really be careful about is um this is a grafted apple tree so if i was to put the soil above the graft which is um, the graft which is here it would mean that the actual tree would revert back to its um its kind of normal characteristics whereas the rootstock of this is a dwarfing rootstock possibly um an m27 I think um, but um, yeah that's really high up though so I've got lots of mulching space before that becomes a problem so before I put all of the soil around the sides of the tree it's really important that I put my tree stake back if you are growing a tree honestly you just have to stake it quite lucky up here on my patio garden we don't get really bad storms or really bad wind like I do at the allotment but my apple tree at the allotment is on its side because it just doesn't have any support whatsoever. But young trees, even as um, as well as big as this one is being a young tree, um, they can just snap in half in the wind. So make sure you get a really good tree support because it's a waste of time if you spend a lot of money on a tree and don't support it. Oh, this is broken, so I'm going to have to find a new support. Oh, how annoying is that? I'm just going to add a little bit of a top dressing of some peat-free compost just because I can see there's a lot of really tiny roots that have been exposed so I just want to make sure they're covered. So there we go. That is one of my autumn and winter jobs ticked off the list. I'm so pleased. I've just given it a really quick water now. So if there are any air pockets around the root ball, that should help kind of wash them through. One thing, though, that I didn't mention and I didn't do in the video was when I actually took the... Uh, the kind of root ball out of the original pot I didn't kind of give it a bit of a shake up so hopefully it will actually kind of grow into that new soil but do definitely make sure you give that a go so it doesn't continue being 
kind of uh, root bound within its own root ball also i need to make sure i get a new tie for my um stake that's so important what i will do now though is i will put a list of all of the items and everything that i've used today in this video down below in the description so if you want to find those products you can i'm going to leave the video here thank you so much for watching today if this is the first time you watch one of my videos please 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 do hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified of all of my latest videos if you think anybody would like to see this video please share it with them that would be absolutely amazing and i'm going to see you in the next episode bye